1982, Rod said he'd like to do an album of the kind of songs he heard as he was growing up. I said, let's just put it away, and there'll come a time, maybe, when you can bring it out again. And sure enough, I get no 18 years later, that time came. The perfect person for it was Clive Davis. So the idea of associated that voice with great standards to me was a wow. Went on to become the biggest selling collected music series in history. Alcohol. You got the new album, the best of the Great American Songbook, yes. a follow-up to your hugely successful album before, which brought yeah. you back into huge vogue in America. It, it's extraordinary that you've had this career resurgence on Great American Songs. Mm. Yeah, it is. It's uh, you know, for a, a British boy from North London to be singing these songs of Ella Fitzgerald and Louis Armstrong is quite remarkable. You know, when um, you had the idea, quite a gamble. For you to do that, I mean, yeah. were the people telling you don't do this. Yeah, I first had the idea in the eighties. You know, but the, the the record label at the time said we uh, we think you're a rock singer and we don't want you to be anything else. But um, when I went to J Records, my current label, they had nothing but enthusiasm for it, and it was done as a labour of love. I thought this sells fifty thousand. I've got off my chest, you know, and I've done it. So I think we're up to about twenty million now. What are you expecting from this one? How long can this franchise continue? Because there's so many great songs. Potentially, well, this, you could sing. Well, this is it. This is the last. This is the best of of the five albums. So uh, we move on to other things now. I want to do maybe a blues album with my good mate Jeff Beck, mm. or I, I may do a country album. Really? I'm supposed to do a Christmas album sometime. I keep getting letters through the post. You can do a country album? <laughs> yeah, man. It's, it, I can sing that stuff. I'd love to. Country music now is, to me, seems more like rock and roll. I mean, there's there's a, you know, they've crossed over. And there's a tour coming. Yeah, uh, myself and Stevie Nicks are going to go out and tour and we'll do a few songs together. So, um, do you still get the same kick out of touring? Mm, yeah. Is it, is, it, is it still the one thing that is more exciting than anything else? Well, Celtic beating Rangers is pretty good. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it is. And it's very hard for me to explain to you how it, would, how it is. It's uh, to walk out and feel all that. As I said, well, it really is love coming so, out. Take me out. I'm walking out with you through the tunnel onto the stage. It's 80,000 people. What's that feeling like as you do um, Well, I don't suffer nerves, as, you know, like I used to. In fact, I was more nervous to do this interview than going in front of an audience to sing. Because it's so dangerous. Because it has been dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but it's it's wonderful. It's anticipation because you 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 sort of know what you're going to get from the audience, but you're not sure whether they're going to react in the way you want them to. And sometimes when they don't react the way I want them to, that makes me really mess about. And yeah. how do you know when you've got them? Even if it's a you can see it, mate. You can feel it. It's like an avalanche going over you. It's, really, it's tremendous. Yeah. And is that the greatest feeling? Uh, yeah. Is yeah. It, it I'm going to ask you. I mean, is it is that better than sex? No. No, 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 it's not that good, mate, bloody. Of course, it's never going to be that good. <laughs> no, but it is a wonderful feeling, it really is. And thank you, everybody out there that's put me in that position. What would you like your epitaph to be? Um, I'm a celebrity, get me out of it. <laughs> Do you have a way that I've you'd like... I've finally given up smoking. <laughs> Do you have a way that you'd like to be remembered, though? Um... Just as an honest guy, you know, uh, loved his football and just a simple, simple man, really. Got extremely lucky, extremely lucky. If your parents could be sitting here now watching this, in this, mm. these extraordinary surroundings, what would you think they would have thought? Well, they, they, you know, they saw me break through in the, in the, in the early 70s. I had a massive house in England, you know, that uh, they'd, be, they'd be over the moon. You know, they'd, so they'd still... be proud of you as a man, do you think? For, yeah, for the way absolutely. You, you've evolved. Yeah, they would, I'm sure. I mean, I think they would probably go around turning all the lights out, you know, to save electricity. <laughs> I mean, I haven't really touched on this. It's obviously a delicate area, but <laughs> you have got a little bit of a reputation, Rod, as being, well, you know, tied to the next couple of coats of paint. <laughs> Is no, this anyway, true? It's not true. It's not true. I'm, uh, I'm very careful with money. I, I'm not very trusting of accountants and lawyers and the likes, you know, because, you know, you get guys like Madoff and, you know, they went to jail and 
people have got turned over in this business and I was turned over for considerable amounts of money and it makes you not trusting. But um, no, you, when it you've comes... You've lost lots of money. To... Yeah, yeah, not compared to some, but, mm. you know, I got swindled out of it, you know, by not keeping an eye on the books, <laughs> mm. which I do now. Do, do you know how much you're worth? Uh, sort of. But it all depends. It's inflation and current market trends. Well, I've read anything from, you know, 100 million to 500 million. No, that's disgusting. We can't talk about that. We, we, it's not that disgusting, Rod. Come on. It's a pretty dangerous question, <laughs> I must admit. Is this the most dangerous interview you've ever... It's bordering on it. It's bordering on it. I, I don't know. I really don't know. It's, um, you know, I, 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 I don't want to retire. That is one dread I have in life of when this finally ends, like most people in entertainment. Does it have to end, though? I mean, if you're your kind of singer, mm -hmm. you're singing great standards now, do you ever have to end? Do you have, I mean, Sinatra was still going in his 80s. Do you, do you have to give Is there a moment when your pride would say to you, enough? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I would imagine, you know, if I did, I don't know, I don't know, I'll never be fat or if my hair fell out or something, I might... What would be the worst thing for you, oh, fat or bald? The barn, the barn, it going, you know... Bald? In the air. God, don't know, I'd cope with that. <laughs> There's one thing me and the Queen have got in common, do you know what it is? We both had the same haircut for 40 years. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, your hair is extraordinary. How do you keep it it's, in such a magnificent splendour? Well, you just cut every couple of weeks. It's very important to keep it really cut, strong. Or is it like a no, sort of hedge, is it hedge trim? <laughs> it's hedge trim. <laughs> now, now, it's been a nice interview so far. I get it cut every couple of weeks, but I do look after it. I mean, I wash it every other day, put oils in it. When I don't, when I'm not staying in, I just cover it in oil, keep it. You know. Oh, would you say you're vain or not? Yeah, most men are. Come on, I saw you when you came in the house, looking at yourself in the mirror. <laughs> Giving it one of them. I was admiring your <laughs> gilt-edged antique mirror, I said. <laughs> uh, no more than any other guy. No more than you, I don't think. And, and last question. I've been saving this because it is a dangerous one, and I'm not quite sure how you're going to react to this, but I've got <laughs> oh, to you ask can. you. <laughs> well, it wasn't going to be that, but I mean, if it's something you want to tell me, Rob. <laughs> no, 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 no. No, it's actually whether you're still wearing women's underwear. <laughs> no, not today I'm not. That was something I did when I was going out with a woman called Britt Eklund, and we were short Who was a movie star, of course. Yeah, a movie, wonderful movie star. She doesn't speak too highly of me anymore. <laughs> but uh, we were short of stage knickers, so she borrowed me her and, little and lace what, ones. for what period of time were you wearing women's underwear? Just for one show, but it, I don't know, my press agent at the time <laughs> let it slip. But I actually put them on back to front, because, you know, I couldn't get me block and tackle in, <laughs> in a pair of women's knickers. <laughs> so I put them on back to front, you know, and Rod, we got through the show. Thank you, Rod. Cheers, mate. It's been a lot of fun. And it's been dangerous. It's been explosive, in fact. <laughs> <laughs>